Friday. I am logging in on Instagram, so we're going to give everybody a chance to come on in. So y'all come right on in. Happy Friday. Let me turn the camera around here on Instagram. And we're going to give everybody a few seconds to go ahead and get in today. If you see me looking back and forth, it's because we are live on YouTube as well as Instagram. So happy Friday. So I'll give everybody a few seconds. I see a lot of people coming in on YouTube. So I'll give everyone a few seconds to come in. Hey, Brittany on Instagram. How are you? How are you? Y'all come on in. We had a little bit of rain today. It's cloudy. I love it. It wasn't a lot of rain, but it was just enough rain where I didn't have to stand out here with a water hose and go ahead and uh, water for hours. Hello, Feathered Sunsets. How are you? How are the seeds going? I hope they are going well. I am good, Brittany. Thank you so much for asking. So we're just giving everybody a chance to get in. Um, Y'all know I always do my lives based on uh, conversations that I have with people. Um, and I can just imagine to myself, if somebody else is thinking the same thing or asking the same thing, then it will be helpful to somebody else. So thank you all so much for coming in, for joining. Happy Friday. Comment below. Let me know what all do you have planned this weekend. I won't be doing a whole bunch uh, of things in the garden. We actually um, have some other plans that we'll be doing, but that's okay. When I come back, I'm going to get back to it because I'm off Monday. So I'm going to make up for my Saturday and Sunday. So I will um, bring you all along. Um, before we get started, We're gonna I'm going to try my best to put out a video. We got a shipment today and I want to go ahead and get those planted. The feather sunset, so many seeds. Plant. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good thing when you have so many seeds because let me tell you something, um, feather sunsets. I, I always try to teach people when you start seeds, plant 25% more than what you think you'll need. Because if y'all caught my live last Friday, remember I told you a frost was coming. And I tried to protect my plants as much as I could. Um, we did uh, the frost blankets, and then I told you about mulch. But what I will tell you is I lost three of my Lemon Boy tomato plants. And I wanted them in the garden so bad this year because um, I just wanted some yellow tomatoes. That's all. They, they were yellow. <laughs> I just wanted some yellow tomatoes. And we lost three. But guess what? I had some on standby. So what I did, like two of them possibly could be saved, but it was going to take a little bit for them to like really jump back. So um, I just say, you know what? I'm going to pull them because I, I planted enough or I started enough from seeds to where um, I can just pull them and I pop the other ones back in. So they are thriving really good. So if you start seeds, I know a lot of people say, like, it, it just depends on who, who it is. But I always start more seeds than what I think I'll need. If I don't use them, I will give them away or I will even sell some. Like, I've sold some things on, like, Facebook Marketplace. Um, so, just think about different things like that. But I, I just, you just, you never know. And like I always tell people, it's some plants that you can plant, you can nurture and they will still say that they don't like it there. And so they'll die. So if that happens, guess what? I pop one back in. So that's what happened with the tomato plants. We also had a little frost damage. I think it was like on our pineapple sage um, and some other. We did have frost damage on some of our plants. But you know what? It's back hot again. So I'm so thankful for today with this overcast. And I hope we get a little bit more rain overnight because... It has been like in the 90s this week. And so that's why I've been coming out um, doing some other watering as well because, you know, I'm just trying to keep everything irrigated and just in a happy place. So thank you all again so much for joining us on YouTube, on Instagram. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday. Um, and I, I thank you for just taking the time out of your day to join us. 
So um, let's go ahead and get some housekeeping rules out of, out of the way. So if you want to be notified when we go live, make sure you text the word Let's Grow, L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W to 474747. Text the word Let's Grow to 474747. And so you'll be notified not only when we go live, when we have specials, when we have deals, when we have some information that we think that you should know about. So make sure you do um, you text that. Also, if y'all know somebody who wants to start a garden or if you're just um, getting started, make sure you like and share this information. We are just trying to teach everyone we can not only to start a garden, but um, if you all are new, we garden organically in our organic garden. But um, I don't want to confuse people. Now we have some things up front in the uh, in our garden where we do a lot of ornamentals like the super tunias and different things like that. Now we do um, use like synthetic fertilizer, but for all of my vegetables and all of my flower vegetables, all of my flowers in my vegetable garden, those are totally organic. We also every year, every season, like change out some of our different pots that we have just so that when people come, they can see those are not organic, but our garden, our vegetable garden is. And then the things, the flowers and the herbs that we grow in that area, all of that is organic. We try to garden organically because y'all know what I say. When you know you grow, when you grow, you know. You know what you put on there. You know what's being done to it. So I just want to teach people how to grow um, I was t uh, commenting on somebody the other day because they were saying, oh, I can't grow. I have a black. I stopped them right there. I believe that whatever you put your mind to, you can do it. And that includes gardening. That includes growing. So don't get in the mindset of saying that you can't do it because you can. So if you know somebody, like and share this information with them. We can all do it. If we can learn how to ride a bike or if we can learn a new skill on the job, if we can learn something that we're interested in, you can you can grow. I'm not saying that it's just going to be like a cool breeze where you can sit back and drink lemonade all the time while you watch your flowers grow. It is work involved, but it's also a journey. It's also a process. So um, I just wanted to put that out. Um, also... If you're interested in knowing when to start seeds for your zone, your zip code, um, where you don't have to look on social media and see people like right now, we're putting out our summer vegetables like our tomatoes and cucumbers. And for some people, it's not time yet. So if you're interested in knowing when to start seeds, your area, your zip code, how to read the labels, um, how to start the seeds, make sure you sign up for our Seed Starting Masterclass. That link is in the bio on Instagram. And when the YouTube video is done rendering, I'll make sure I put all of that information in there. And again, if you know someone or if you're totally new to gardening, sign up, get the free ebook, Five Tips to a Flourishing Garden. It's, I call this like, y'all know <laughs> we're retired military. I call this like the basic training to gardening. If you uh, think about these five basic, back to basic tips, then you can garden anywhere, any type of garden, container, raised beds. I've lived all over the world. I've done container garden, raised beds, native soil, and ground. You can do it, but you just need to know these fundamentals. So I call that the basic training of gardening. It's totally free. Make sure you download the ebook, kind of refresh yourself with gardening. So welcome everybody on this Friday. I think that is it. I just wanted to put all of that out there. Uh, I saw some comments popping up. So let me just check really quick. Hello, everybody. Hello, Tara. Um, you're sort of at a standstill for planting seeds. Uh, and some of veggies are going out. Yes, 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 yes. We're, it's, during this time period, uh, it just depends on the zone. And so I definitely understand what you're saying. Like I haven't started any of my cucumber seeds and I'm like, you got to get ready. But I have planted my tomatoes um, and we're getting ready to plant some more. And yes, this is spring cleaning time. Y'all, I'm going to show y'all a picture. Not now. Um, so if you're not subscribed, um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're not following us on Instagram, make sure you follow us because y'all, 
I have got to do like a story. I think I'll do a story of our roses. I keep looking over here because they came on strong. They're so beautiful. Every time I walk out, I'm just like, oh my gosh. And I haven't even fertilized them uh, this year with our slow release um, fertilizer. So I am... I am, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit behind. Hydrangeas, full sun or shade? Uh, let me answer your question, pink baby. It depends. And I'm going to tell you why I say it depends. I have two type of hydrangeas in my garden. I have one that is like part, part sun to afternoon shade. And so it depends on the type. So I have some hydrangeas in the garden that are, mostly shaded but then they have varieties it's a variety that i have that is in full sun and they say you can put them in full sun so you have to see what type because there's so many type of hydrangeas so i have two different types i have one that can flourish in the sun but then i also have some that they have to be like part part sun afternoon shade and it depends on where you're stay, staying. So y'all know we're in coastal Georgia. And when I tell you this sun is the sun and humidity, like seriously, like I tell people, when we plant our summer vegetables, sometimes they have to have a shade cloth on them because the sun is high. It is, it's beaming, it's humid here, and it is crazy. So it really depends um, for the hydrangeas, which, uh, which ones that you have. They have all different types. We just ordered some more from Proven Win Winners Hydrangeas, and those they require like partial partial shade. So it it depends, and and so many people now, and we're going to talk about this in a few minutes when we go over um, plants that you can plant in the shade garden. Um, it just really depends because so many people are doing some types different type of hybrids as well, which I love. And two of these. Are, um, I always get every year, but they're a, high, a hybrid version. So let's go ahead. Let's get into it, y'all. Um, we are talking about plants that you can grow in shade. So y'all know I was running my mouth talking and someone has um, pl uh, a space in their garden that gets a lot of shade. So let's step back a minute. Whenever you get ready to start your garden, one thing I always tell people is before you go buy any plants, first of all, decide where are you going to put that garden at? And it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a raised bed, if it's native soil, or if it's um, pat, you know patio garden or wherever. Just first decide where are you going to garden at? So once you have your space, take one day, just take one day. I know it's going to be hard. Because you're ready, you're ready to get growing, and you're ready to go to the uh, garden center, and you're ready to buy plants. But I encourage you, take one day um, that you have time to jot down how the sun is going over the space that you're about to get ready to garden in. So I tell people, take 24 hours. So I'll get up at like 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll Okay, and I say, okay, I want to garden over here. So I'll see where the sun is at 7 o'clock in the morning. Then I'll look where it's at at 8 o'clock. Like every hour or every two hours, I'm looking to see where the sun is at, where I'm about to get ready to put my garden at. Because that's very important. Because if you notice, when you look at the tags, you'll see things that says, you know, full sun. And when they say full sun, that means at least six or more hours of sun. If they say uh, full sun or morning sun, that's a, that's a very important one. Morning sun and then afternoon shade. So you want to get up in the morning and you want to see if that new place that you're going to put that garden at, where is the sun at in the morning? But I was talking to this lady because she has total shade. Like she doesn't, and it's trees all around her. Like it's trees all around us too. And you also have to take in the, the trees uh, the shadows that they cast and you have to take all of that. So that's why I say just take just take 24 hours to annotate during the day, every hour or two where you're about to garden, where is the sun at? Because it's going to tell you a lot with what you can grow. So this lady, she has shade, she has trees, but she still wants to be able to grow. Now, when you go to garden centers, most of the ones that I have went to, they are categorized by, 
you know, shade or sun, perennials, annuals, different things like that. And so she just wanted to know what were some good plants that she can grow in the shade. So let's get into it. First one that I love that will give you some beautiful color is impatience. So if you love flowers and you love colors, definitely grow you some impatience. Now, remember at the beginning, I said they have different um, hybrids. With the impatience, you have to look because they also have, this is what I buy every year. I buy, and y'all comment below if you've heard it, I buy the sun patience. So normally, like the New Guinea impatience, they are really for shade, but they have made a version, still beautiful color, but they're called sun patience. And they are for the sun. You can put them in the sun because although we have trees in the back of our fence, we get a lot of sun. We definitely get that full sun, six plus hours. So impatience is a good plant to grow if you still want that color and beauty in the garden, whether it's container garden or in the ground, and it has, you can grow that in the shade. So number one, impatience. Number two, and this is another hybrid that they have, coleus. I know y'all have seen coleus all over. They have beautiful foliage. A lot of people just grow them for the foliage, but um, as they continue to grow, some of them will have like a, um, a little spike, a flower spike that'll pop up. Now, traditionally, coleus is for, um, they're for shade gardens, but again, their versions that I have grown that are called sun coleus. So they can tolerate the sun because traditionally coleus cannot tolerate the sun. And they just have, they have some that are like, um, like a green and white, a green and pink, a green and burgundy. So you have to look and see. Now there is a type of sun coleus that I have bought where it says you can grow them in the shade. You can also grow them in the sun. So they do have hybrid versions where they will be able to thrive in the shade or the sun. So first is impatience. You can grow those in the shade. Second is coleus. You can grow those in the shade, but now they're making varieties where you can grow them in the sun as well because they're traditionally shade plants. Now we have a small space um, and I did a YouTube video on this in the corner that has the trees over it. So one that I grow where I can look out and see the beautiful foliage and then as they grow, they'll have a pink, a purple flower that will pop up and that is hostas. Some people call them, ho ho yeah, hostas. So they're all different types. They have like a guacamole hosta that's like a lime green with a dark foliage. And then they have like the traditional ones. Now y'all know how I am when I go to the garden center. Um, I found these on clearance for a dollar, the hostas, but they are, they come back every year. They're perennial and they, um, they die out when it gets cold and then you'll see them popping up every year. But that's a good plant to grow in the shade for not only foliage, but they send up these, um, purple spikes, the, the kind that I have now is different varieties, but they will send up, um, the purple spikes. So let's talk about some herbs that you can grow that's in the shade that you can use. But when I tell y'all about this one now, I want you to be careful. The first herb is lemon balm. I love lemon balm. Now, I'm not a doctor, so you always have to talk to your doctor before you go <laughs> doing this stuff. But it does, it helps me. I'll talk about me. It helps me sleep. It is a, it, it's very relaxing. Like I have lemon balm tea a lot. And I can sometimes uh, during the growing season, I'll have to dehydrate it and dry it and I'll put them in the mason jars. But sometimes I'll come out here and I will pick me some um, lemon balm leaves and I will steep them and make a tea because it's very, uh, it's like a stress reliever, very common if you have enough, um, you know, if you have a problem going to sleep and they're very easy to take care of and they will they appreciate some shade. Like, although it says sun, partial shade for my lemon balm, since the sun is so high and so hot and so humid and so strong here, 
mine actually benefits from growing like in a partial shaded garden. But remember I told you, let me let me give you a warning on mint, which lemon balm is part of the mint family. Mint will also grow great in the shade. But let me tell y'all, mint, lemon balm will take over. So I always encourage people, unless it's a place in your garden where you just don't mind it taking over, then you can let it go. But I have to grow these in containers because if I don't grow them in containers, if I put them like in my regular garden or regular raised bed garden, they will take over. They're going to take over everything. They just going to smother. They When I tell you they take over, they just come in and they shove and they push over and they're going to take over. Just y'all remember this when I tell you they will take over. Lemon balm and mint will take over your garden. So if you don't mind or if you have a blank, uh, blank uh, space that you just want some beautiful greenage because they grow by rhizomes underneath. And so they will just start taking over everything. So grow them in containers if you don't want them to take over. If you have a space in your garden where you don't mind them taking over and you just want loads and loads of lemon balm or loads and loads of mint, then let them go. Let them go crazy. And that's what they're going to do. But I just love them. I got a lemon balm right here. But um, it's so easy to grow. Very easy to grow. And like I said, I just come in here and this needs watering too. I just come in here and I just pinch them off because when you pinch them off like that, that also encourages um, them to continue to grow and continue to be bushy as well. So lemon balm is a great plant that will also benefit from growing in the shade. So let's go over really quick some of the plants that we talked about for um, y'all that are just joining. So we're talking about uh, plants that you can still grow in the shade that they will um, thrive. If you don't have a lot of sun in your garden, that does not mean that you can't have beauty and you can't have color. So we talked about impatience and we talked about coleus. And remember, they do have different varieties now um, and different hybrids that if you still want to grow them, you can do the sun patience and you can do the sun coleus. But if you have shaded, um, you can get the new guinea and patience and they will just be beautiful beautiful color in your garden and then we talked about the lemon balm lemon balm will benefit from shade but again if you have a space that you don't mind it just going all over the place and roaming and doing what it wants to you can do that but if you want to keep it contained i highly encourage you to plant it in a pot put it in a pot um and don't let it go wild but lemon balm is so great for um I drink either lemon balm or chamomile tea at night a lot of the times because I cannot turn my brain off. And so that will just kind of calm me down and put me to sleep. And then when we have loads of it growing during the season, um, I will pick it and dehydrate it just so I can encourage more lemon balm to continue to grow. Now, you will probably be able to relate to the next one that can tolerate some shade and will still continue to grow. And that's a lot of salad greens. Y'all know how I am about my salad. Y'all know how I am about salad. And the reason why I say that now, again, they're making different varieties that can kind of tolerate that sun. But a lot of the salad greens, when it gets too hot for them or too much sun, you notice that they will bolt and they will start going to seed because it's too hot. So they can tolerate some shade. So if you want to grow some edible um, vegetables and plants, then consider growing things like lettuce. Also spinach is another one. We had to go ahead and pull the rest of our spinach because it was getting hot. We have been in the 90s and so they were starting to bolt. I actually have bok choy over here that is going to seed, but I always tell people what I do with a lot of my leafy greens is I sacrifice one. I let one go ahead and go to seed so that I can collect those seeds and continue to grow them in the garden year after year, but they will definitely tolerate some shade. So salad greens and spinach, you can grow them also in the shade as well, because for us here in zone 8B, 
it's actually better that we either grow them in the fall when it's cooled off and the sun is not so high or like early spring. But y'all know we have like a mild winter and like straight to summer, straight to summer here. And then the last one is like um, cabbage. You can grow cabbage. It can definitely um, benefit from being a shaded, being shaded. And I'm thinking about my cabbage. I have like six cabbage plants out now, now in the raised bed garden that I'm really hoping, I'm so hoping that I, it, it'll get through before it um, bolts and goes to seed because um, I see them forming the leaves. And it's going to get a little bit cooler because of the rain and the overcast. But we've seriously been having like lower 90s, upper 80s uh, degrees um, as far as the temperature. So I'm just hoping, I'm hoping my cabbage will um, make it through because I like to make sauerkraut. Never knew I liked sauerkraut to two years ago when I tried it. And it was just like, this is pretty good. Never tried sauerkraut all while I was growing up. And I just happened to look at a blog or something with a recipe and I had some cabbage that I was growing. So I said, let me grow it. And plus cabbage is very good for you. Uh, good probiotics um, when you make sauerkraut. But you know, I always cook cabbage Southern style as well. So we have about six, um, six heads of cabbage that are growing. I don't grow a lot of cabbage because I like cabbage, but cabbage takes up a lot of space in the garden. So I kind of plan out cabbage with how I want to grow that. So um, I'm hoping that those, I'm hoping that they'll make it. So let me go through the comments and then we're just going to do a recap of some of the plants that will grow in the shade. And let me show y'all what I got to really quick before I look through the comments. I have been looking for my chocolate mint. I don't know if y'all um, have been following us on YouTube. Make sure you um, like and subscribe. But I let my other chocolate mint. I didn't, I didn't take it in, but I found chocolate mint and it really smells good. And I also use the chocolate mint in tea. A lot of people use it in baking as well. But I, when I saw it, I was like, okay, you got to get it and bring it in when it gets cold <laughs> again, because I'm going to grow this in a pot as well. These are going to be grown. I'm going to put them in my own pot so that they can flourish. Um, how do you make lemon balm tea? All you have to do, you can make it fresh, you can make it dried. What I do, the ratio, is if it's dried, I put about a tablespoon of the dried lemon balm. And someone asked me to make a video on what we use to dehydrate and how, and that's coming up. That is coming up. Um, but I use about one, some people use one teaspoon, but I use about one tablespoon of the dried lemon balm per eight ounce of... Um, per eight ounce of hot water and I let it steep. Now it depends on your, uh, how strong you want it. I like stuff strong. So I'll let it steep probably for like eight to 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, but lemon balm, you will just the taste of it is so good. It's like really, it's really good. And, and I love when I grow it because I'm going to tell y'all this, it's a big difference when you grow lemon balm in your garden versus when you go and get the lemon balm herb. I had to go get the herb because I was blending up some teas. And let me tell you, it tastes nothing like what I grow in my garden. I had to look on the label, like the outside of the label again and say, is this, did I use something else? Is this lemon balm? And it was. But when you grow it and your it just has a lemony flavor, it's just so good and it's so relaxing. And I don't know, it might y'all, it might be in my head. I'm not sure, but I just feel like I start. You know how you drink something and somebody tell you it's it's great um, for aiding in anti-stress or it's a great to help you go. It's like I start just getting relaxed and you know just laying my head back on the headboard. And just eventually just kind of dozing off. And I don't know. Now, you know how people say the placebo effect, too. I don't I don't know if that's it. But that and chamomile, um, we're growing that in the garden, too, this year. Um, it, it really is relaxing to me. But, okay, again, talk to your doctor. And also, if you have allergies against things like ragweed and stuff like that, chamomile may not be um, a good choice for you to make a tea. Um, so I'm not a doctor, 
but I just like to grow herbs and study herbs that are beneficial for me and like the people around me um, because we're growing some more of the hibiscus sorrel this year. I love um, growing that. They call it like Jamaican sorrel, um, but I love to use it because it tastes good and you can do so much with it. It is a little tart, a little bit tangy, but I grow it and I make tea with it because it helps lower blood pressure or it aids. Let me, let me get my wording right. It aids with helping to lower blood pressure. So, um, we love growing herbs around here and I like mixing herbs, making different, um, herbal tea. We're about to get ready to plant our, uh, butterfly pea flower. And y'all stay tuned. I know a lot of people, we sold out of that like in an hour and a half. And people are asking me when we're going to have them in stock. I actually went through everything and they should be, they should really, really be back on the website by the end of this weekend. I have been, it's, I, I'm ashamed to say this, but we are all family here, y'all. And I can tell y'all this, um, I, I get so ashamed of myself because accounting is my profession and I have played around here with my taxes, but Monday I'm going to get them. Monday I'm going to get them done. So I have been getting all of my stuff together because I don't I don't like I don't like doing taxes. I just don't like I did them when I had to, but now that I don't, and I still answer questions for family members as well. But I'm just like, you got to do this. Like you can't stop playing around, and you should be ashamed of yourself because. Accounting is that's your professional, your profession, and you're sitting up here doing stuff like that. So I just been getting all my paperwork. Like I tell people, I have my paper, it's together, but I like to make spreadsheets for the person that does them. Like I have all my spreadsheets together. So you can really look at it and it will not be any questions. I have everything broken down. Like I'm very OCD when it comes to certain stuff. And I know that if somebody gives me like a paper or something or some stuff, I would want to be able to like, I don't know. So I, I make spreadsheets and I color code everything. And uh, yeah. And you know what? Urban Good Guard. I know. I know that it's ex an extension, but I'm treating it like April 15th because if I, I will tell myself, oh, you got time. You got time. And that's what I did about April 15th. I'm like, OK, normally I'll get them done in March. But see, I play around a lot, too. I play around. And so when my husband asked me the last time, he was like, you didn't went and got the taxes done yet. And I was like, okay, let me, let me call this lady and, and make an appointment. And that's a shame. I used to do our taxes. I did, but I used to do my parents and, you know, some other family members. But like I told y'all before, I don't know if you, um, I don't know if you, remember me saying it or not, like after my mom retired, I stopped because my family and they know it and they probably watching live. Like when you take them somewhere, they would do what the people tell them and say, Hey, we'll have them done or we'll call you. But they would be blowing up my phone. Like, did you get a chance to look at them yet? Did you get a chance to do it? So once my mom retired, I told everybody, uh, -uh you got to find your own person, including myself, you know? So, um, that is how that's going to go. But Monday, I should have everything done and just everything color-coded in folders just to hand to her and just get it done. So that's what I've been doing. And I, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better next year. <laughs> I'll do better. I say that every year. I'll do better next year. So I'm going to go over some of the questions on YouTube first, and then we will go over some of the questions on Instagram. So for everybody who I missed, I'm so sorry. Thank you all so much for joining me on this Friday. And then we're going to do a recap too. So hello to everybody, everybody, everybody. Um, I have never pruned my hydrangea. Again, it depends. And I got two different types. So, and I don't know, it's by Better Homes and Garden. It is a hydrangea that's made for sun. And the reason why I love this hydrangea, and I'll make sure that over the growing season because it's starting to leaf out now and I will look it up because it's different types of hydrangeas y'all know how they say big leaf it's different type where you you prune on old wood you prune on new wood so you have to take that into consideration but this uh hydrangea that's for the sun 
that's by Better Homes and Garden, and it's like an ombre effect. Like, it'll start off like a white to cream, and then it'll go to pink, but it was so pretty, and I will, y'all stay tuned. Like, I, the tag is still on there, but the sun has faded it. I'll try to see if I can get the name, but that specifically says you do not have to prune it. So what I do to that hydrangea is I'll um, clip off the spent blooms on there, but I have not pruned it. Then they have some that you you have to, uh, if you prune it, you prune like the old wood and they have another one. If you prune it, you prune the new wood. So you know what? I'm going to write that down because I want to do a video on that. Um, I want to do a video on that for y'all because it is... It's different hydrangeas, and if you prune something that you're not supposed to, you won't have blooms that following year. So let me write that down, or let me just, let me put it up here because I don't have a pen, y'all. But I'm going to write that down. I'll write that down um, because I don't want to, on live, give y'all misinformation. I want to look it up just to make sure I'm for sure before I um, put that out to y'all. But it's different type of hydrangeas that um, if you prune it, at the wrong time or if you prune the old wood you won't have buds the next year so um let me let me put that on my to-do list for the hydrangeas and the other one that i have that tolerates the shade as well that one says you do not have to prune it at all and those are oh my gosh bloom it's oh my gosh i can like i can see the tag right now and they have them like at you know the popular the popular garden centers but it said something like bloom, whatever it is, it, you don't have to, you don't have to prune it um, at all. And they, they are leafing out now. They're coming back. They're so pretty and I love them. But yeah, it just depends on, it depends. That's what a lawyer always tell me. You tell people it depends. <laughs> Y'all don't tell, don't tell people that. It's, it's some, it's a lawyer I talked to and he's like, you know, the best answer you can give people is it depends. That's not a good answer. Um, hi everyone. We're ready to build an arc up here in zone 4B. <laughs> okay. 4B. Yes. Ooh, wow. How is the weather in four in zone 4B right about now for you? Comment if you're still on here and let me know how is the weather for zone 4B. Y'all should be getting ready to to warm up. Um yes, okay. I also have an area where my grass last year burn last year if these comments don't stop fading if y'all know on youtube how to have these stomach comments stop fading i can pull them up but they'll just like fade away and i have to uh get them again let me let me know in the comments where my grass burns so this year i'm planting fruit tree yes yes that's right grow food not lawns um a lot of spots in our front yard because it gets a lot of sun oh it if we don't keep it irrigated oh it looks brown around june through august is brown and sometimes we can irrigate it and it, it just doesn't even matter like the sun just burns it up and when i say full sun from the about seven o'clock in the morning to when the sun goes down it just stays on it so that's why i say it's important y'all if you want to start a new area in your garden if you want a new garden just take one day I know that those plants look good at that garden center and people are walking out with those little, um, y'all know the little things, the little flat beds and you know, I just look at them and I'm like, Ooh, those, that's a pretty plant, but just take one day to just get you a piece of paper and just say, um, let me just see where the sun is in the sky, where I'm planting my new garden at. Cause that is really going to save you a lot of time and a lot of frustration so y'all just i'm telling you that has helped me a lot to just go ahead and do that um so yeah but plant, uh, grow food not lawns because what my i asked my husband the other day um he doesn't know that i'm about to get ready to just see i have to i have to do baby steps with him like he appreciates not having to cut so much grass but you can't you can't put it on, like, you just can't, like, all it, well, you have to do phases with him. So, what I have already planned out, because we're going to grow more hibiscus sorrel this year, which is what I use in my teas, and I have already, like, plotted out on each side of the new raised bed, like, an additional five feet. So, you see how you have to do, like, you have to do it in phases. So, it'll be an additional five feet 
or maybe three to five feet on one side, three to five feet, or it's like subtle changes. Now, if I go and till up this whole yard right here, he will, he'll ask me, am I crazy? But that's another story. <laughs> that's, that's another story. But yeah, an additional five, probably five to eight feet. I'm, a, I'm just going to extend it. And that was with my, um, other garden too, like the old garden. At first I start out with raised beds and then I say, you know what? I want to put some flowers in front of the raised beds. So I took like three feet and I just did like three feet. Then the next year I just did like another two feet. See, it just have to be subtle changes where he says, Hmm, look like we're losing space back here or something like that. But I mean, he did say he appreciated not having to cut so much grass. So if I can turn this whole back, this whole backyard, like at one time, and I'm eventually going to do it, but I just have to be subtle. You know, you got to be, you, you can't, I can't put it on them like that. Cause yeah, another story y'all. Um, hello, Yankee sister. I don't get, okay. Yeah. Let me tell you about grass. <laughs> I don't get people love of grass. That's why I say if I can turn this whole back area into just like growing space and have very little grass, you know, I would definitely, I would definitely do that. I really would. I really would do that. Um, I love impatience. I think I see, okay, coleus are nice. Yeah. Lots of color and low maintain, maintenance. Cause yes, we have the sun coleus and it is like, the only thing I did last year is um, when they start like sh uh, sending up the flower stalks like they were about to go to seed, I would just cut them back so that I can have more color in the garden. Very beautiful color um, that you can have if you have shade. And that's why I tell people everything doesn't have to be green, you know, because a lot of people grow ferns in shade and stuff like that. You can still have that, but you can also have color in a shade garden as well. So you can also bring lots of color. Another one that um, I'm growing now that is like morning sun and afternoon shade, I think about three hours of morning sun is begonias. So y'all comment below if you grow begonias. I have to really look at the sun in the morning on those right there. And I'm, I'm hoping I don't have to move them. But those are another plant that um, you can have lots of color and they can still grow in the shade. Begonias is another one. And these that I have are orange, like an orange and a yellow begonia. So those are really pretty. And let's see. Okay. So impatience. Yes, I love impatience. Um, let me tell you, Yankee sister, about impatience. I started some from seed. I don't know if it was the company. And you know, I love to do soil blocking. Um, the germination rate was not as I expected. I did get them to germinate. I did everything it said, but I'm not, I'm not sure if begonias, because let me just say this, some plants, when you start from seeds, there are some that are really difficult to start from seed. And I will tell you one that I'm struggling with right now. Like it's, it's making it, but it's, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot of time. And that is lavender. I started, you know, I like to be uh, experimental. And so I've always done lavender and rosemary from cuttings. And I would, you know, um, make more plants that way. But I say, you know what? I hear a lot of people say that you can't, it's hard to start lavender from seed. So you know me, let me just see. Now, out of 12, I do have four. I have four that are, but they, they, they're growing so slow, but it's just some, it's different plants that are just hard to, it takes time. I'm not going to say hard. Let's scratch that. We're not going to say hard. It takes uh, a lot of attention to get them to grow from seed. So I noticed that about my impatience too. So you're not alone um, with the impatience. I did get some to germinate, but I thought it would be more so, um, yes, coleus seeds. Okay. Doing coleus seeds. They have some beautiful, have y'all seen the, I think it's called sun cherry or sun chocolate coleus. It's like a, a pinkish with a burgundy and a greenish around there. It is, when I tell y'all it is so, I think it's called sun, uh, sun cherry. It's really pretty. So pretty. And I do want to start those 
from C as, as well. I got a lot of more seeds I have to start too, and I need to get on it um, as well. Lemon balm works well for us over here too. Yeah, anti-anxiety. Yeah, anti-anxiety. Yeah, anti-stress. I'm telling you, lemon balm is just, y'all got to try it. Just try But talk to your doctor first now. I said it aids, aids now. Now I don't, and then also I say talk to your doctor first because a lot of herbs, um, if you're on certain medications, you have to um, talk to your doctor, like St. John's Wort. Like if you grow that and make it an oil or something like that, that's that's one that um, interferes with certain med medications. And when I say that, like it won't, um, the medication won't absorb like it's supposed to. Um, I study a lot of a lot of different herbs because I just remember my grandmother. Like seriously, I think I only went to the doctor when I broke my arm that one time. But she would. It's stuff that she used to have us take. I don't. I don't. I don't even know what it was. But she was. We just didn't take a lot of medicine. I'll just. I'll just say that. I won't go into. We we didn't take a lot of medicine, and. Um, so I, I do, I study a lot of different herbs that are helpful. Hello, best yet journey, best yet journey. We are in coastal Georgia. So I just give people the area Savannah. We're about 30 to 45 minutes from Savannah. Um, if you've heard of Fort Stewart, we're by that area. That's where we're by. My husband is retired, um, military, but we are looking to move one last time. We are getting older. We used to move every three years. For all of y'all that are new or joining us, we have stayed in Italy. We have stayed in Japan. We have stayed in Germany like three years each. We visit so many different countries, Austria, uh, Switzerland, France, and I think it's the former Czech. The former check, I'm not sure. Let me just be quiet. But we've visited a lot of countries. And that is why I tell people I have learned to adapt to wherever I grow and garden. Because like some places, we didn't have a big space. Sometimes we stayed in apartment style homes. Sometimes we didn't have a patio. But I just found it. I'm just like, you have to, you have to grow. Like I made it work. And let me tell you, I thought I made it one time. I knew I gave my own title, the gardener. Like I, I crowned myself the gardener when um, one of the Italian guys looked at my basil and he said, it was something about basilico. Basically he was saying it was beautiful because it was so big, so bushy. And I cut it off and I gave him some, like I was proud of that moment. So um, that's just a little bit about us. But right now we are like right out of Savannah. Um, but again, I do, we're looking like one more time, just one more time to move. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that go. We've always stayed by some type of, some type of water. <laughs> we stayed in Okinawa. That was so beautiful. Um, the Pacific ocean, but I don't know if we'll stay by water this time. I'm almost done Instagram. And then I'm going to go to all of your comments because I saw those, uh, popping up. Um, how do you make, okay, so I answered that. Hello. Uh, is lemon, to me, Yankee sister, it is. When they, because to me, like when I go to the natural um, health food store, like they'll have the date of the dried lemon balm on there, but you know that it's not like fresh from your garden. Um, so it just, I just, I find that I love fresh. Even when I dehydrated my own, like it still had that flavor as I just picked it up from the garden. And I'm telling you, when I just went to get some because I ran out, that tells you how much lemon balm, um, that tea that I drink, it just did not even taste like lemon balm. Now, it may have had the same medicinal effects to it, but it just, it did not taste, it did not taste the same at all. But that's just me. Um, we are going up. Okay, so we answered that. Yes, 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 yes. Lemon balm, chamomile is very relaxing. Uh, what's the other one that I drink? Because I try to switch up the different herbs that I drink that's like gives a very like anti-stress or relaxing effect. It's one more. Oh my gosh, what is it? Y'all, I can't go inside and look because I'll probably be here for all day. What is it? 
I know it's lemon balm. Holy basil. We're growing holy basil. That's what it is. I'm like, oh my God, what is it? Holy basil is another one that is good um, that I like to drink as well. That's another one when I went to the store to get the dry herb. Tastes nothing like it, but holy basil is another one that aids in anti-stress and just kind of like a relaxing effect. But again, make sure you look up these herbs and their properties, and especially if you're on medication, make sure you look all of that up um, because like I said, some do have like different interaction, but holy basil is a good one too. And it's really good, really, really good. Um, pawpaw trees. Oh, wow. Not sure if it was on your list, but I just planted four pawpaw trees in the shaded area. Going to try passion fruit vines there as well. I want to do passion fruit vine as well. Um, passion, passion, pa the, the leaves are very good for relaxing. I told you, I, I study a lot of, um, I try to use food as medicine and, and plants as medicine as well. So the passion flower leaves if you look in some of the different commercial teas that is another one that's very relaxing as well um so i definitely wanted to try to grow uh the passion flower that's another one thank you for saying that one because that is another one um let's see procrastinate yeah i do a lot of procrastinating i gotta stop oh wow zone 4b Devin. i hope i'm saying your name right i hope i'm not i hope i am i really and I just pressed something, Devin, and made your moderator. See how I'm pressing buttons? I told this lady at, at work today, we were trying to figure something out. I said, I am known to press buttons until I see if it works. So, Devin, wow. Zone 4B, high today is 48, low is 39. Still a little cool there. Still a little bit cool. Um, yes, Yankee sister, I'm going to look up that information on the hydrangeas. Um, it was 85 degrees last Monday. Yeah, this weather is really doing some crazy stuff. And I also saw a, um, I also saw, you know, we, we experience a lot of hurricanes each year and they said it was going to be overactive. I think hurricane season this year. So, um, we'll, we'll see. I, I hope it's, I hope it's not. Um, love, yeah, begonias are very pretty. To grow in the shade for some color. Thank you, Sonya C. Uh, yes, my shirt. It's a it's a beautiful day to leave me alone. We got this. I, I buy a lot of the funny shirts. I may be older, but I have a very good sense of humor. I always wear some type of t-shirts, and a lot of people just look and stare at me a lot. These uh, this one came from Five Below. Um, yeah, and it's not true. It's really not true. Like you can you know. People just look and like, did she really wear that shirt? Uh, yeah, the chartreuse. Chartreuse is a beautiful color uh, plant. Hello, Ziona. I hope I said your name correctly. What are your tips, advice for flowers that did not germinate during winter sowing? So did you sell, did you uh, direct sow them outside or did you, um, or did you um, start them? In, let me, let me read the question again. If y'all hear music, Here's a fun fact, another fun fact. Uh, my husband, as old as we are getting, we're not old, it's only a number. He is what is considered a bass head, okay? So he listens to a bunch of loud music. I used to like it when I was young. Now I don't. It gets on my nerves and I tell him, please don't play it inside because I'm getting a headache. Um, I do like good music. I like all music um, to a certain volume, but he just listens to it to where... Um, it vibrates your eardrums and I'm over that So <laughs> for flowers that did not germinate okay so yes answer okay uh, during outside mm, nothing like did you ever see any sprouts coming up uh, in the containers so you direct sold them outside in the containers what type of seeds were they and did you ever see like uh, even just a sprout growing up going up comment put that in the comments so i can see uh you mentioned that you, you sell stuff we do we do have seeds online we just have a few i know we still have basil seeds arugula seeds pumpkin seeds online i'm about to get ready to put my roselle the hibiscus sorrel they're about to go online those the the butterfly 
pea flowers and the hibiscus sorrel is what sold out in like an hour and 30 minutes when I put it up on like YouTube and Facebook. I didn't even expect that. I really didn't. But what I told everybody, give me a little bit of time and I was going to just go ahead and like package up everything that I had so that um, once once that's gone, it's it. Um, I wasn't sure how much I had at first, so I just put a number out there and I didn't realize that they would go that quick. So we will have seeds on sale. Um, we also have a um, digital course this, um, that is called the Seed Starting Masterclass. I'm working on something very that I think a lot of y'all have been uh, emailing us about, wanting to know information. I'm working on that, and that's coming out soon. I want it to be a surprise for y'all. Um, that is coming out, but it will be a digital course as well. And um, the Let Us Grow Together ebook. Uh, we have that. So many people have just, it's it's really great, especially if you want to get started. I always say herbs and lettuce is very easy to grow. And y'all know how I am with salads. I eat a salad every day. And I just feel like we're missing out on a lot, y'all, because you know the salads that they sell in the store, like it's so many different tastes and so many different levels of salad that you can get, like arugula with a little peppery bite then you can get like radicchio once you mix that stuff together i'm telling you a lot of times i'll just take a salad and just um i don't know i'll take a salad and that's like my meal because it's so many different elements and taste to a salad it's no longer you, you you you're outside of iceberg you're outside of romaine when you learn how to grow your lettuce and side note y'all I just ordered some more lettuce seeds yes, yesterday online. <laughs> I just ordered some more lettuce seeds for the fall, though. Um, for the fall, but I'm just telling, I, I just want to share with you. It's like so many tastes. You know how people are so used to iceberg or romaine or what else they have, like maybe a little bit of spinach, but there's so many different variety of lettuce, and they have their own taste. And so I like to just like intermix it. I'm starting like different salad bowls right here. On my, let me show y'all real quick. I gotta show you because I gotta plant three more salad bowls. Like before it gets too hot, I'll just I'll just do a salad bowl. That's how much I love lettuce. Hold on, y'all. Just hold on one second. Okay, here we go. So y'all know I like to do a lot of soil blocking. So here is a lettuce bowl that we just started probably like a couple of weeks ago. Now I have this in an area where it gets afternoon shade because I don't want them to bolt and go to seed. But a lot of times, honey, I will start me a salad bowl and I've ordered some more salads. <laughs> I've ordered some more lettuce seed. I don't need any, but I like to try different lettuce. So um, yeah, I like salads. Try to get your greenery or like I say, people get your roughage in every day some type of green. I have to make my husband eat vegetables. Like I cook green beans today and I'm like, where are your vegetables? Don't be a meat eater. Um, so yeah. Okay. Let's see y'all. I'm coming Instagram. Y'all give me just a second, just a second. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to keep this stuff up. Okay. I want the hibiscus. Ziona. Okay. So just give me a I, and I, and what I'll do is I will put it on, y'all, all of my, oh my gosh, all of my, they just faded away, every single comment. Um, I will put the hibiscus, the it, it I'm going to put it up. I don't like to make promises, but by the end of this weekend, no later than Monday, they should be up on the website. So make sure you're um, subscribed to our YouTube channel. What I'll do is I'll do a community tab. Um, I'll put it in the community tab and say, Okay, the seeds are now available. Um, and then if, and another thing, if you're not on our text list, text Let's Grow, L-E-T-S-G-R-O-W to 474747. And I will text you. You'll get a text that says they're now up because I tend to um, text in, in my email list. They'll be the first to know. So make sure you're either on our email list or either you text the word let's grow to 47 47 47 and I will you'll be like the first seriously the first to know um when they go back on the website so yes 
Okay, how many plants do you suggest? Let me tell you, I grew the uh, hibiscus in a 20 inch pot, two 20 inch pots last year. And they, I had to end up going to the garden center and getting like those tree stakes because they got so big and they were falling over. So this year we're planting them in ground. That's where that extra five feet on each side is coming from because they got, they normally get about between four to six feet in height and four to six inch in width when you plant them in the ground. And we got those seeds from a farm um, that's about an hour from us, uh, Gilliard Farms. And they um, grow it. They make different teas, different things with it. But we went like on a farm tour. And they had some that were lined up. And he said for him, they were perennials. But mine ended up dying out. But he said for him, they're, uh, they were perennials. And his was about, they were about four to five feet in height. And they were about four to, yeah, they were about four to five feet in width as well. So that's why I want to grow them in the ground this year. And I, I'm, I'm going to grow about three to four on each side of the new garden just to let it have its full potential because I, I don't think the 20 inch pot, we still got a good flush of the um, calyx off of there, but I think it probably could have did so much more. Like I, it, yeah, it, it could have grown because when I pulled them, like the roots were coming out of the drainage holes at the bottom. That's how I know it could have did more. So that's why I'm going to plant them in the ground this year um, with that one. The Seed Starting Masterclass. Yes, Dante. Um, I will put the link after this video has rendered. I will put the link in the description. The Seed Starting Masterclass is over 80% off. And I'm telling you, what made me want to um, make this seed starting masterclass? It's been out since January, but a lot of people were on social media saying, "Hey, I've started, I've started my seeds. Look!" And so people were starting seeds inside, and it was not time for them at the time. That's why I say you gotta know your zone, and you gotta know what you plan on planting, because if not, you're gonna be stuck with a lot of seeds and a lot of different uh, transplants that are in your house that are not ready to go out for weeks, like four to six weeks or even months. So that's why when people put that on there, I know that I'm in zone 8B and I know like, for example, I'll give y'all an example. I know come July, late July, August, is gonna be time to start my seeds again for my cabbage, my cool weather um, vegetables inside. I know that because I know what zone I'm in. I know how to read the uh, seed label packages to know and just all of that different stuff because that's what I was trying to tell people like like our friend in 4B. It's certain stuff that they can't put out now but when you look on social media you see so many people like you know you just you want to put them out too and it's not it's not your time. So you you do see starting not only do you um, have more control over what you can grow than just what's in your garden center, but you also have a jump start by starting the seeds um, inside as well. So like when they hadn't put out the tomatoes, we had tomatoes growing and like ready to put out. Now y'all know that Easter snap, you know, <laughs> I told you I lost. For those of you who just joined us, I did lose some tomatoes uh, that I tried to, but it was so crazy. See, and that's what tells me that it just depends on the variety too, because I have more tomato plants out. They kept, I mean, it didn't phase them any when we got down to 32, but the lemon boy tomatoes, they they really took a they took a hit. So I was thinking, you know what? The, I I planted more, so let me just let me just put them out there as well. So um 10 25% germination of variety I planted. Wasn't sure whether I okay, my amaranth had one little seeding, not sure if I did wrong. So when you so when you direct so like how often were you watering? And the germination does have a lot, a lot to do with it. That's why I like to order up from a lot of seed companies that have the germination rate. So that way that'll help me know because a lot of times we think it's something that we're doing wrong, but it's like I just told you about the lavender. A lot of seeds take a lot to, ger like it's not hard. It just takes a little bit more effort to germinate. So 
um, that could have been it. And then a lot of times um, when they do germinate, you see them pop up, you really have to stay on them. Like you have to make sure they're, they're watered. You have to really stay on top of them when you see them. Because if not, they can easily dwindle back down, back to the soil. So um, it seems like you had enough light requirement because you, you direct sold them outside. But I always like to keep an eye. Like once I see them germinate, I know I need to start paying a lot of attention to them, you know, as far as the watering requirements and just making sure. I tell you a lot of things too. I don't know about what zone you're in. My little seedlings that I start outside, a lot of times I have to stay on them and put a insect netting on them because sometimes a lot of little insects love to eat your seedlings as well. So you have to just start paying more. As soon as you see them um, emerge from that soil, you have to like really stay on it um, to look at it. So it, it could have been like a combination of all of it, um, especially with, you know, just making sure you pay attention to the watering and making sure you pay attention to the insects because it's one collard green plant that I'm looking at right now where I found where the butterflies were laying their eggs. And so now the little worms are eating up the leaves. So I had to come out here and spray some BT on them to tell them to please leave my collard green. You know, please leave them alone. <laughs> Just leave them alone. Okay, butterfly PCs, Yankee Sister. Yes, those are so pretty. And those are also, I also make that into a tea. A lot of people just grow the butterfly pea flower for the beautiful blue flower, but that can also, that I also use that in my tea as well. That is like native of Thailand. They use that a lot to color food, color desserts, make the tea, and it's really good. Butterfly pea flower tea lemonade is good as well. Thank you so much, Ziona, for uh, putting that in the chat. So if you want to be notified, make sure you text uh, Let's Grow to 474747. Hello from Alaska. I just looked at something like a documentary the other day on somebody with gardening in Alaska, and it's so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Okay. Our winter so old gallon container. So yeah, it could... It could be a combination of a lot of different, a lot of different things, especially when you direct sow them outside. Okay, so now I'm going to hop on over to Instagram and answer some of the questions. Feathered Sunsets, I am so, let me tell you, Feathered Sunsets over on Instagram. When I tell you she is starting these seeds, y'all, she, she is, when I looked at her story last night, I'm like, okay, I got to get back on it. I got to start some more, uh, I got to start some more seeds. Uh, Dr. Josh asks, I, I have got, I've heard of that name before. That's why I'm looking like that. I've heard of that before. St. John warts can also accelerate metabolism of birth control pills, thereby decreasing the effect. Yeah. St. John's wart is, um, it's, it's really known to like lessen the effects of medication. That's why I say if you're on medications, you definitely need to talk to your doctor if you plan on using St. John's wart. Uh, definitely. You are moving to Virginia. <laughs> Feather Sunset. I told y'all my sister stays in Williamsburg, Virginia. The only thing about Virginia is get a little bit cold during the winter, you know, and sometimes they get a little snow there. So yeah, but I mean, it's, 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 it's an option. Like it's not, it, it's not out of the question. I keep telling my husband, okay, when we move again, this is it. Like we can't keep moving anymore. So it has to be like our forever, our forever place because he knows that I want to uh, do a market garden. He knows that I want to be able to grow for the community that we're in. Like he knows all of this. So that's why, you know, we're not in a hurry. I do want to, but I don't want to procrastinate what I'm known to do. Okay. Taxes. But it, th this is going to be it unless something else happens. Yes, lemon balm tea, a garden in a mug. Let me tell you, lemon balm tea is so good. And yes, holy basil is so good. Um, do you let it dry out first? Uh, I'm thinking you're talking about the lemon balm. No, I'll come harvest lemon balm fresh. And I have like a uh, tea thing. I'll just put the leaves in there and like a cup or two of water and just let it steep. And it tastes so good. 
Um, but if I harvest like a lot, and last year I harvest a lot more, we had a lot of lemon balm tea. So that's when I'll start dehydrating. Um, I cannot get my lemon balm to germinate. Any tips? Are you, um, are you doing them in cell trays? Lemon balm is one that I start in a seed starting mix. I don't plant it too deep and I use vermiculite on top because it's light. And so when the uh, seed starts to emerge and push up, it doesn't have a hard time pushing up. Um, like it could get through that vermiculite. I know a lot of people use potting soil and if you put too much on top, sometimes uh, those seeds don't have enough energy to push through that potting soil because it's a little bit heavier than the vermiculite. So that's one of my tips and tricks is like whenever I start seeds, instead of layering it some more, I'll sprinkle vermiculite on there because I know it's, it's light. It helps with moisture control, um, keeping the moisture in, and then those seeds won't have a hard time using all their energy to try to push up through those, you know, cell trays or soil blocks or containers. So that is my tip for lemon balm. Okay, I purchased your butterfly. Can I start inside? Yeah, Katrina, I actually started my butterfly peas in inside. We started those inside, and um, I'm so glad to see they're in the front, but I'm so glad to see them bouncing back. We took them back inside when we knew we were going to have a frost because they are definitely frost sensitive. Like as soon as it got cold, the butterfly pea seeds, they, that, was, that was it for the season. But when I was hardening them off, they took a little bit of wind damage and you can see them on the leaves. So, uh, but they're bouncing back now because it was like 86, 91. So they are definitely bouncing them back. But if depending on what zone you're in, you can start them inside or if you're in a hot enough, warm enough zone, you could start direct sowing them as well. So it's definitely up to, uh, it, 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 it depends on your zone. Because what I will tell you is they do not like cold at all. Anything in the 30s, mm -mm, they're going to they're gonna start and you'll see it. They'll start to um, die out. Okay, and uh, far north life, you're trying garden for the first year. Good luck. You know what? I got to clap it. I got to clap because that's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to hear. Good luck is a great journey to go on gardening. I'm telling you, you'll love it. You will absolutely love it. Limit that guy Julius. That's what I'm going to do this year. A I'm I'm going to do tinctures with lemon balm and then we're also growing yarrow. I'm going to do a yarrow tincture as well. So that's what I want to try my hand in this year. We do a lot of teas, but now I'm going to move over um, to the tinctures as well. I want to make calendula salve, like I want to make salves this year. So I definitely want to do um, do that as well. Yep, yep, that's, that's good information. I've been reading about the tinctures, you know, where you have to let them sit for about four to six weeks. And um, so I'm excited to try that as well. Excited. So you guys, we have been on here over an hour over an hour, but it was amazing. So I don't want to leave you without recapping what we talked about because y'all know how I love to talk. Um, what we talked about uh, for all of those who are just joining us. And again, make sure you like and share. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on Instagram. Normally, what we are trying to do with the daylight savings time is every Monday, we go live on at noon and then every Friday at six o'clock. So Mondays at noon, Fridays at six o'clock to try to accommodate um, everyone's schedule. And so also text Let's Grow to 474747. And that way you'll know when we put the seeds back on the website, you'll know about different specials. Um, get on our email list, uh, download our free ebook. So what we discussed today is Plants that can grow in the shade. Like a lot of us, we want to garden and we look around and we have trees and 
they have a cast over them and we just don't get the amount of sun that we need for certain plants. But that doesn't mean you can't grow and it doesn't mean that you can't grow plants that have colors. So the first plant that we talked about were impatience and those come in a variety of colors. They tolerate, uh, they tolerate um, shade as well. And coleus, coleus is a beautiful, they're making so many beautiful uh, color fo uh, foliage for coleus. But when I talked about impatience and when I talked about uh, coleus, remember I said that they're making varieties and hybrids now that can um, tolerate the sun. So make sure you look at the tag because I know for a fact that we grow sun coleus and sun patience so they are bred to be able to handle the sun because traditionally they are plants that are used for shade gardens also lemon balm and a lot of your different mints they will definitely love you for some shade for our lemon balm here we actually have to grow them where they receive a little bit of morning sun and then like afternoon shade but they love that because if we put them in full sun in our garden the leaves will burn on them for our lemon balm and our mint. So um, lemon balm and mint, they tolerate shade as well. Then we have our salad greens um, because if depending on if they haven't, if they're not like a hybrid or anything, a lot of salad greens, when it turns hot, they will bolt, they will go to seed. So they definitely tolerate from, um, they definitely tolerate shade. We have three um, salad bowls that are growing and then I got to plant three more but I'll show you all who are just joining again um, and so we um, we have them in a shaded area like they receive a little bit of sun but I don't want to put them in full sun because I know that they'll bolt and go to seed um, and then also your uh, spinach we actually had to pull our spinach because it was starting to bolt and so you'll notice a lot of the leafy greens. That's why they say, you know, plant them in the early spring or the fall because too much, like they need a little bit of sun, but they can, they will do just fine in the shade as well. Um, so those are just some plants and some uh, vegetables and some herbs. So we did a combination of them. We talked about impatience, coleus, lemon balm, mint, lettuce, uh, spinach, and cabbage. If you have shaded areas, but you still want to garden, those are plants that you can grow in the shade as well. So um, that is, I see, okay, our Instagram name is at Southern Entertaining as well. So yes, make sure you follow us on Instagram. Thank you for the recap. You are so, so welcome. I always like to recap because I know people are like in and out. So you are so welcome for the recap. A tincture is basically when you take an herb that has medicinal properties in it and you let it sit. It could be in an alcohol. What we're going to do is going to put it like in an alcohol. And when I say alcohol, like a, a high, what do you call it? You know how you have a, a high alcohol content. You know how you have stuff that's like 90% alcohol, 40% alcohol, high alcohol content. I think that's what it's called. Um, and you let... It's, it could be in, it depends on the type of herb it is, but the herbs that I am doing, um, it could be a vinegar, it could be, uh, but we're doing ours in alcohol. So basically a tincture is we, um, like my lemon balm, I use that for an example. So we, 80 proof, yeah, the proof, thank you. You can see, you can see I don't drink alcohol, I'm like what is it, the high alcohol content? Um so what I do is I, what I'm going to do is take a, thank you so much, a, like a 80 proof or 90 proof, 100 proof. Y'all, did y'all know in Italy they had like a hundred, like 180, they had some high alcohol proof contents over there, but they would make, like they would make different things out. They called, it was something called grappa or something like that. Okay. Let me, let me get back to the tincture. See how I just went left. So you take, I'll use lemon balm. So I'm going to take lemon balm. I am going to put it in a mason jar, okay? Then I'm going to put a piece of parchment paper on top and um, screw it on. But before I screw it on, I'm going to put the alcohol in there, cover up the herb, and I'm going to let it sit for four to six weeks. And periodically, I'm going to shake it. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to check on it, and I'm going to put it in a dark cabinet. 
so that after about four to six weeks, that alcohol will have extracted those medicinal properties of the herb. And then what you do is you put it like in a, a little bottle with the dropper. And so every day, depending on what those medicinal properties are, maybe not every day, however often I want to take it, I will put maybe about three or four drops of lemon balm tincture up on, under my tongue, um, which is a great way to get it straight into your system and uh, be able to benefit from some of the medicinal properties of that. So that's what people call tinctures. They come in like the little, I think they're like little one or two ounce droppers but you have to let them sit somewhere in a dark place and just continue to monitor it. Make sure that alcohol stays above the herbs, uh, go in and shake it and turn it. But the reason why I'm going to put the um, parchment paper on there is because on the Mason jar, you see that plastic in those, uh, that ring. Well, some of them can, uh, they have what's called endocrine disruptors where they can get into that tincture and you know, not be as beneficial as they're supposed to. So it's just protecting that little plastic ring um, once I shake it up and down or turn it or do like, so that what's on that, on that plastic or that coating, it won't get into my tincture. I hope that that is kind of clear. And you can make all type of different tinctures. It just depends on the herb, what the medicinal properties is and the best way to use that herb. Like some herbs, um, you can, um, I think it's glycerin. You can put it in like for people who don't want to do the alcohol or like kids, like you don't want to do alcohol. You can, you can do it in another form. So it's just extracting the medicinal properties from the herbs and just using it. Cause y'all know food to me, food is medicine. Um, plants are medicine. And for all of y'all that's just, just joining, I'm seriously like, my grandmother, she wasn't an herbalist, but she just took the, like, and y'all, okay, and then I'm going to go, y'all. <laughs> like, I can remember her, like, my sister called me the other day, and she was um, asking me, it was some child, she was saying, like, what do you use for cradle cap? Now, back in the day, they used to have something called sweet oil, um, but I remember, I just remember my grandmother with, like, little different, like, even when the baby had the white stuff on their tongue. I think she called it thrash. It was just little stuff that they used to do back in the day that it just worked. It just worked. It just really worked. Like if you had an earache or, or something like that. And that's why I tell people it's something she used to give me every day. One teaspoon. It came in something that looked like a bouillon cube, but she would just like take a water bottle and dilute it and mix it. And when I tell y'all, I like I didn't catch colds flus stuff like that like i don't i don't know so i just over time you don't appreciate that stuff till you start getting older <laughs> you really don't appreciate till you start getting older and stuff starts to happen and you go back to your roots that's basically because that's basically why i love growing herbs sage is another one we got sage growing here you could take sage um i know that it's good for like you know sore throats or do a sage gargle different stuff like that you're just using the herbs to heal basically that is um that's 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 what i do food and herbs okay yeah 80 proof that's a that's a lot <laughs> 80 proof that, and thank y'all for that because i'm like high alcohol content i'm not sure um and guess what growing with donnie we just planted a bed of stevia and then i also have i got a few more here that I got to find somewhere to do. But y'all, stevia, I have started adding those leaves into my tea because normally when I do my tea, I don't put any sweetener in there. A lot of people like to use honey, but I just do my tea and just drink it because I'm drinking it for medicinal properties. But I had to trim my stevia the other day, you know, trim it back so it'll get bushier and everything. And let me tell y'all, I'm going to start at, and I'm going to be dehydrating and I'm going to start adding stevia to my um, tea as well. But a, tink, a stevia tincture. Ooh, that'll be, that is, uh, that's good. Did y'all, uh, I wish I knew, I, I do too. Um, I was on a live and they said a name that was similar to what she used to call it, Aphistid. 
but I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but I know for a fact, and I don't know why I was the only one to take it. And it was a whole bunch of grandkids, but it, um, somebody on a, a live said a name that was similar to it. And I said, you know what? I wonder, I'm going to, I'm going to eventually find the name. I mean, I've asked my aunt, I've asked my mom and I don't know, like I do remember it was a tonic that she took. I used to see it in the cabinet. Like it said tonic on there. And so um, I'm telling you, I I did listen. Like I, I was I was the grandchild that while all the kids were outside playing, like I was right up under my grandmother, like right in the kitchen. I remember she used to sweat so much from being in the kitchen because um, I don't know if y'all can relate, but back then, let me tell you something about that juice. Okay. Meaning electricity. If you don't need it, you don't, you not. And then she used to say like, and she's right when it was hot and you were sweating, you do not turn on, uh, the AC when you're hot and beaten with sweat. And then, you know what? And so she's like, uh, uh, you too, too much juice. You burning up too much juice. We don't, and I'm like, grand it's hot in here. It's oh God. I'm about to die. It's hot. But, and I would just be like the one that was wiping the sweat off of her. But I tease my sister and I hope she watched the vi video now. And I tell her, I said, see, that's why you don't know how to cook. Because while you outside playing, see, I was in the kitchen when my grandmother had that Coke bottle rolling out that dough, making those pies. See, I was, I was paying attention to what was going on. And I always tell her, that's why you can't cook now. Because you weren't paying attention. You was outside. I was the grandchild that was like right up under her paying attention. But I just, I don't think I was, I was more observing. That's how I learned how to garden. And some of the things that she does, I use today. But I just wasn't asking a whole bunch of questions. I was more of like the observer um, with that. But yeah, I tell you what, I wish I could talk to her right now. Um yeah, we do. And and that's why I try to teach my kids now, like with the different things that I do, I always tell them, hey, use this for this or this is how you do that. Um, now, they play like they don't they're like they're not listening, but I'm hoping as they get older, like all of this stuff uh, will come back because I still call my mom to this day about, you know, just certain things I can remember um, as a child. And you know, and just ask her different questions like that. Like she, she my mom has a, she got a, a library of old school, you know, some old school remedies too. Now, sometimes <laughs> she playing like she can't remember, but you know, I got to jog her memory, but yeah, she, she also has, you know, some old school remedies that we have to, um, you know, call her about as well. And yeah, so I, I do, I try to tell my kids like, you better be listening. You better listen to what, um, what I'm telling you because you, you may need it. You may need it. Yep. Yep. Y'all are so right. Y'all so right. So, okay, y'all, we have been, thank you all for hanging out with me. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me. It was not my intention to stay on this long, but I had a good time. I had a really good time today. Um, again, I will keep y'all posted. I'm going to try my best to put up um, a video this Sunday, but I'm not sure... I just try my best. I'm like, I'm like my dad. Like, I don't like to make promises unless I know for sure. So I'm not sure, but I will try my best. So you all be safe this weekend. Oh, really quick. Were y'all able to get the um, garden kits that they had from Lowe's yesterday? Y'all comment below. So Lowe's has this summer fest going on all month of April and each week, I think you have to wait till Thursday and you sign up and then like the next week you go pick it up. And so um, the one for next Thursday is already sold out. And I think the next one, it'll be like a free tree. And then I forgot the other one. And I, I think they're like teaching a class. But if you haven't, uh, it's, I think it's Summerfest. But anyway, I signed up for the free gardening kit. You got a bucket. You got a... A bag of potting soil, some plant food, and you got to pick, um, you got to pick a flower, a plant, a plant of your uh, choice. And a lot of people were having a lot of problems. I I initially had a problem, but since I um, go to the garden center so much, 
the guy, the man, the garden center manager would, he wasn't there that day, but, um, we got it straight. I, I will tell you, we got it straight because, you know, like I told, it's not the cashier's fault if they don't, um, if, if, if it's not communicated. And like I told the little girl, I said, you know, it's, 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 it's no big deal. Like it's not an issue for me. It's just like, it was so many people that were frustrated, you know? And I said, you know, you, you have to communicate these things. You y'all know I didn't went up to customer service. <laughs> he thought it went up to customer service. And I'm just like, it needs to be better communicate, especially with functions like this, because it was supposed to be drive through, but we actually had to go in. And that's why I told the little girl, it's, it's nothing towards you. But if you put this information out, somebody got, like I told her, I said, call, please call the supervisor. Cause somebody got to know, like, you, it's, it's no way. So I see that somebody did get theirs. Um, me and this other lady, I just met her yesterday. We kind of hung out and talked a little bit and uh, talked about our garden, but we eventually got it. But I, I saw a lot of frustration in people. That's why I was asking. And I'm on a couple of groups where they got the bucket, but they didn't get a plant. Like people didn't tell them about the plant. So that's why I asked y'all because you're supposed to get a plant um, from the foodie fresh line as well is uh, someone that said they had to go back today because they didn't give them a plant. They just gave them the bucket with the potting soil. And, oh yeah. You got some gloves inside and um, the plant food, but they didn't get the plant. And I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to, you were supposed to get a plant with it. Okay. So growing with Donnie, you were able, like I've tried to go, go on for, I think it's the pinata this Thursday it is a tree the next Thursday. And I forgot what the other one was, but the one for this week for us is like already, it's already like you can't even sign up for it. So good. I'm glad you were able to get it. I need sugar cane, rice, tobacco. The mo Yeah. You know what? Down, that's why I love taking, I, I like, I love the Savannah area because it's so much history. I When I first got here and whenever we get to a new duty station, like, that's one thing I love about my husband is because he will really get to know wherever we go. Like he'll find every back street, every like one in Italy, no lie. I told him don't ever take me with him again. Like we got lost for four hours. Okay. We got lost for four hours because you know how the U S interstate is like you can get off and you can go like right back on and turn. No, -uh, you can't do that over there. And it was like we were riding in circles and just could not get back. And I don't, I don't like that. I always, whenever we move, I always tell him to, you go and explore and then come back and tell me about it and come back and take, take me because he has shown me some places in Savannah that I don't even, I can't even get y'all back to it because I have got, I, I use the GPS. I do like, I know the main streets, but it's like, little shortcuts but anyway when we first got here um i always even overseas um my kids will tell you every tour they got with the uso we own it we own the tour because i want to learn the culture i want to know about it and i want to know the history and it's so much history in savannah and the reason why i bring that up is because savannah um, they, it was very known for rice. Like they knew how to grow rice here. And when you look at it being the low country, because you have to grow it, you have to grow rice a certain way. And then also in Darien, Darien, Georgia, it's this old, he's an old man. And he was, he had like a rice field and he was showing like how the water had to be, how they had to do. Like, I like listening at stuff like that and learning but uh, rice was really big, like a really big crop here down in Savannah. I can remember sugar cane. I can remember my mom buying it from somebody and we would just like chew on it. Uh, sugar cane, I would love to have. And toba you know, tobacco. That, I hear a lot of people talk about tobacco. I got to look that up. I definitely have to look that up. I can't find rice seedlings anywhere. Uh, Yeah. That that's you know what that's a good point. I have never, I don't even know how to start rice. I, I'll just be honest. I know that it's a big. You know what? That's my next project too. In addition to hydrangea, I need to look up like how to even get it going. Because I will tell you, we went to South Carolina. What is that? 
Oh, y'all, y'all help me. Um, they did a tour. What was that? It was a, uh, it was a, a garden. It's, it's well known. They do a lot of tours. Uh, oh gosh, I'm telling y'all, I go on, I go on all kind of tour. Whatever they got going, it was it Magnolia Gardens. Might have been Magnolia Gardens. I'm not sure, but they had a tour, um, and it was a slave tour, and they showed you the houses. But they had a like a bowl and it was so heavy about how they had to do the rice like to get the hole off or something like that and y'all when i picked up just like how they used to get the hole off oh gosh you had to be just and i was saying to myself you had to be strong and i know somebody wrist was like given out like i know their risk was given out i know it was because that it was heavy and that's what they um that's what and what was so interesting about that tour to me and y'all don't quote me help me out in the comments if you know it was the type of water where it was salt and fresh water oh gosh the guy said the name it was salt and fresh water make a long story short they had two people that stayed on both sides and every and they had a lot of rice fields. And see, I'm mad at myself. I'm so mad because I can think of the type of water that he said it was. But I know the meaning of the name is it was salt and it was both fresh water. So they had two people on both sides every minute with a spoon tasting the water. Once it turned into salt water, they, they had a levee that they had to shut down because if they didn't shut down, the water would come in the rice fields and ruin the rice. The salt the salt water would come in the rice fields and ruin the rice. And I was like, imagine tasting water. You standing there, that was your job all day, tasting water every minute. Imagine that with rice. So yeah, but I saw a comment that popped up and somebody said, check Etsy. Very good, yeah. Yeah, I've never seen it at a nursery either. Um, but yeah, that would be a good place to start. And then um, that's a good place. That's a good time for me to run my mouth to to somebody that's either in the Darien area or uh, the Savannah area because they they still grow like it's it's little it's a community in Darien, Georgia, and they still grow rice. And the guy was doing like a documentary on it. But that's a good question. Now, I'm quite sure with him, like they save, they save it over time. But even if you wanted to start, that is very, that's a very good question. I've never, I've never tried to go rice, y'all. Never, ever, never. Y'all got lost in France for four hours. Yeah, I'm telling you, I don't, I, I don't, um, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't like to be in car. I'm not, I will tell y'all this. You will not want me in the car with you if the trip is over um, probably about an hour or two. Like when we go see our um, sister in my sister in Williamsburg, let me tell you, it's eight hours up there. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, Lord. I got my legs. I got to stretch. Oh, <laughs> I'm telling you. And we got to make a trip this weekend, too. And I know it's going to be like, oh, God, somebody help me. <laughs> Can we stop at the gas? I'm like, can we stop at the gas station? Somebody, please. I got to stretch my legs. I need to use the bed. I'm worse than a child. Do y'all hear me when it comes to traveling? I am worse than a child, okay? Um, my husband said, that's it. Brackish. Yes. Thank you, Diamond. Bra that's it. That's exactly it. Y'all see how excited? Yes, that is the type of water. So it's salt and fresh water. That's exactly what it is. Yankee sister, thank you so much. So, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. It will go back into the channel. Thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you for your support. But that is, that is, you're absolutely right. The brackish. Yes. But that was such a good tour. If y'all, if once things gets back, like I told my husband this, um, this year, I really want to, it was my plan last year. Like every year I try to go to, uh, different gardens around the world and just, um, you know, see the different gardens when we went to New York and, um, went up to Niagara Falls, you know, I found some gardens around there to go to. And I always, you know, just, um, 
try to share them with y'all, but I do. That's that's how much I'm into it. So I'm going to try to at least visit maybe one to two gardens uh, this year. Social distancing, of course, but I just I just like to get ideas. And then I also love to see just like different plants that you don't see here in the South and different garden designs as well. So yes, that is, uh, that's exactly it. But Magnolia Gardens, I would highly uh, recommend that one. It, it was one that was right down the street as well um, that I said I was going to go back to. I, I didn't even know about it, but, um, and I want to say Magnolia Gardens. I, I really think that's what it was, but not only did they have uh, a beautiful space, like we did like a boat ride and we saw alligators like in there um, coming out the water, one just chilling on the side, but they also had like all type of tours too um, that you could go on. That's what, that's what I like. We, we like traveling, but just getting there, that's the hard part for me. Cause I'm like, okay, wait a minute. This is too long. In an airplane, it is no better. It's, it's no better with me in an airplane because I'm like, okay, the plane is flying. It should be going really fast and we, it shouldn't take that long. So <laughs> I'm telling y'all, I'm just, I'm the worst. I am the worst. Um, that's when I started loving fly. When I was that, oh gosh, Germany really has all four seasons you experience um, in Germany. And they had such beautiful scenery there as you know and i hope i really hope i know i'm just going off in left field y'all but i just really hope one day um now a few years ago we were able to go back to our duty station which was Mannheim, germany we were able to go back there and visit and it has really really changed a lot but i'm hoping like all of the other places um that we'll be able to go back and visit now what i will tell you i don't know about Okinawa Japan because let me tell you that plane ride oh god I think it was like 17 hours up in the air just 17 hours and the particular time we had a lot of turbulence and um yeah I don't know if I now I'm not gonna lie and say I'll, I'll go back there because I'm not I'm not sure I'm really not sure <laughs> not sure I don't know if I could do 17 hours again like that and I think on the way back it was like 19 that that was a long time but I definitely want to go back to Italy. Definitely want to go back there. They have such, it's, it's so beautiful over there. Sicily, um, I was able to visit there. We were stationed in Naples, but Sicily is so beautiful. Um, and what I loved about Italy the most is the fresh farmer's market. Like they literally got up that morning. They took their basket to the farmer's market. They seen what was there. They decided, and Germany was like that as well. And it was like, Everything was just so fresh and it was just so beautiful over there. And I just, that's really what just like, I don't know. I just fell in love because growing up in Georgia, like we didn't, we didn't go to a farmer's market and just going and walking there, like with your basket every day, I was like, oh my God, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So hopefully we can visit. Yeah. I hopefully we can visit Italy. I, I don't know. I don't know about Japan now. I'm just going to be honest with that one. I don't know. But Germany, I, I would definitely like to visit and some of the other countries as well, as well too. Switzerland was really beautiful. So, okay, y'all it's getting dark. Can y'all see it? It's getting dark. And so I'm going to go in here and, um, do like uh what's the song like i'm gonna lay my head on the pillow after i take a shower <laughs> i'm gonna lay my head on the pillow and relax <laughs> after i take a shower y'all make sure you like and subscribe um make sure you follow us on instagram and for everybody who was wanting the seeds and the seed starting master class on youtube i'll put all those links um i put all those links there and then um make sure you sign up for our text list as well and I will keep y'all just posted on everything that, thank you, Lisa. And Lisa was over there with me. Hey, Lisa in uh, Japan with us too. Now, I don't know how Lisa feel about that plane ride, but that's someplace I probably, I don't know if I'll be able to, um, I don't know. I don't know if I'll visit that again, that plane, unless they have like a super fast plane or like a private jet you know, that can maybe get there in about two hours, you know, maybe I'll go then, but yeah, Tony, 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 honey, I'm about to lay, I'm going to go take a shower and I'm going to lay my head 
on my pillow and uh, and I'm going to relax. I am. And I'm going to have me a cup of lemon balm tea since I've been talking about it all night. So I'll make sure I have a lemon balm tea and y'all be safe this weekend. And um, okay, so yours was 18 hours. Yeah. See, that's why I say 17 hours one time, 19 hours the other way. I just, I don't know. I, I, I just, mm -mm. I mean, you can do anything you put your mind to, but I don't know if I want to do that again. Um, but yeah, so y'all just be safe and we'll put pictures up throughout the weekend if I do get a chance to, um, work in the garden. But if not, y'all make sure y'all show up Monday at 12 noon. Um, and it looks like my iPad is really, really foggy. I hope it's not coming in like static for y'all on YouTube because I'm on my iPad on YouTube. It's like really staticky. You can, oh, my Boogie Johnson, we'll leave the live up so you can, you can watch the replay. Um, we, we uh, talked about a lot today. The, the main subject was five plants you can grow in the shade, but we had such a very good conversation. That's why I said I'm going to go in here and I'm going to drink me some lemon balm tea um, and relax. That's what I'm going to do and just kind of drift on off. So y'all enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Uh, meet me here. If nothing happened, like, like they say, if, um, what does my grandmother say? Uh, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise, meet me here Monday at, uh, 12 noon on YouTube and Instagram. If y'all have any questions, make sure you DM me or email me and then we can just, we can all talk about it and we can have a good time. So y'all take care and we'll talk again soon. Bye y'all.